Good evening, everyone. I welcome all the participants to the first quarter 2018 earnings conference call of Rain Industries Limited. Speakers on today's call are Jagan Reddy Miller, Managing Director of Rain Industries Limited, Gerard Sweeney, President of Rain Carbon Inc., and T. Shurnivis Rao, Chief Financial Officer of Rain Industries Limited. During the call, management will be referencing and discussing a slideshow presentation which is available for viewing on our website at rain-industries.com in the Investor Relations section. We recommend viewing this presentation while listening to management's discussion. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and could be affected by certain risks and uncertainties. The company's actual results could differ materially from such forward-looking statements. Now, if you could turn to slide three, I would request Jagan to provide an update on key developments within Rain Group. Over to you, Jagan. Thank you, Ryan. A good evening to all the participants. As you have noticed from the earnings release and the presentation, the company has changed its business segments. This significant development is due to the functional integration of Rain's businesses over past years. With the functional integration nearing completion, management has taken the opportunity to redesign how it manages the company's product portfolio. Marketing of the products has been switched from a site and product-based model to a region-specific layout, which allows the team to optimize the marketing efforts in addition to segregating its products produced from value-added processes. This structural transparency reflects the business rationale of the company by aligning products along their major value chains, that is raw materials to end product, in addition to increasing focus on value-added processes that are meaningful contributors to the company's earnings. The company believes that realigning our business segments will allow management to increase focus on newly developed products that offer environmental benefits to our customers as well as those that are serving the needs of certain high growth areas. The resulting segments will be called carbon, advanced materials, and cement. This change is effective January 1, 2018, and as expected from an advanced material producer, the transition should stimulate new strategic initiatives to further improve the overall performance of the company. Turning to slide four, the table provides a breakdown of each business segment and the products which roll into the various reporting lines. Here you can see that the carbon business segment is comprised of the primary products derived from calcination and coal tar distillation. The advanced materials business segment includes products produced from further processing of our primary coal tar distillates, our naphthalene production, and petrochemical byproducts and aromatic inter intermediates. We have broken our advanced material segments into four reporting lines, engineered products, petrochemical intermediates, naphthalene derivatives, and resins. In the past, several were grouped with our chemical segment, and the rest have been transferred over from our carbon segment. The products in red were transferred from the carbon, and the products in blue are from chemicals. The heritage carbon segment products are value-added products, which in most instances have their own operating plant at the same location our coal tar distillation is carried out. We believe that further refinements to these products and the associated value achieved by them was lost within the carbon segment. Now with the new classification of these products, there is a clear demarcation between output from the primary coal tar carbon business and further downstream process of the derivative. Now turning to slide five on new capital expansion. In order to participate in the rapid growth of water white resins for additive, additive applications and to further grow and diversify the advanced material business, Rain plans to invest in a 30,000 tons per annum plant for DCPD, C9 resin polymerization and hydrogenation plant at its integrated coal and petrochemical site in Castro Pruxel, Germany. This plant will produce various hydrogenated hydrocarbon resins or HSCR products with flexibility to produce various HSCR products 
using special proprietary and patented technology offerings. Hydrogenation is the next step for hydrocarbon resin producers to satisfy evolving regulatory requirements and demand by consumers and industrial goods manufacturers for cleaner and safer raw materials. We are seeing particular high demand for water white resins from the producers of food packaging and sanitary products. In 2017, we originally announced plans to do this expansion at our youth on plant in Netherlands, but after doing the feasibility study, it was observed that Castor Ruxel would be the most competitive and economical location due to its full integration into the largest advanced material plant of grain. Additionally, there is a scope to upgrade the capacity of 30,000 metric tons per annum, 50,000 metric tons per annum, with further debottlenecking, which will provide further growth opportunities in the future. Project execution commenced in calendar year 2017, and HSCI plant is estimated to start operations in calendar year 19. Total estimated capex for this project is $66 million. All the requisite permissions are obtained, detailed engineering is done, and site preparation work is under progress. Turning to slide six, on the status of ongoing capital expansions. Last year, we announced three other capital projects, including a 370,000 tons per annum vertical shaft calcination plant at Vizac, debottlenecking of our petrochemical distillation facilities in Europe, and a 4.1 megawatt waste sheet recovery power plant at our Nalgonda cement plant. Preliminary project work commenced in calendar year 17 on the vertical shaft calcination. We have obtained all the requisite permissions and the work progress is as per the time schedule. The calcining facility is estimated to commence operation in the third quarter of calendar year 2019. The debottlenecking of our petrochemical distillation facilities has made substantial progress and we estimate that this project will be completed on, on schedule in the fourth quarter of calendar year 2018. Further, the preliminary project work for our 4.1 megawatt waste sheet recovery power plant with our Nalgonda cement plant facility commenced in calendar year 2017. All the requisite permissions are obtained and the design, engineering, procurement, and construction contracts are executed. Structural work is under progress and progressing as per the planned schedule. The new waste sheet recovery facility is estimated to commence operations in the first quarter of calendar year 2019. Now moving to slide 7 on consolidated financial performance. Rain is pleased with the improved performance during the first quarter of 2018 compared to the first quarter of 2017 due to the continued benefit from various market dynamics together with the strategic initiatives implemented during the last two years. The performance of the advanced material segment was weaker in this quarter, primarily due to the increase in operating costs from the appreciation of euro coupled with reduced sales volume and outages at the BTX and PA plants. In the first quarter of 2018, RAIN achieved consolidated revenues of Rs. 32.91 billion, consolidated adjusted EBTA of 6.62 billion rupees, and consolidated adjusted net profit of Rs. 2.51 billion. From the exchange rate fluctuation perspective, the impact from the appreciation of euro is partially offset by depreciation of the USD against the rupee in the first quarter of 2018. Turning to the next slide on geography mix, the consolidated revenue of rain is primarily generated within Europe, excluding Russia, which accounts for approximately 33% of revenues, followed by North America, the U.S., and Canada at 29%, and then by Asia, including Middle East, at approximately 26%. Of our total revenues, only 4.7% were earned from within Russia. The majority of these sales are generated from our Russian JV, of which rain share holding is 65%. Now, Jerry Sweeney will take you through the industry developments on the next slide. Jerry? Thank you, Jog, and a good evening. It's a pleasure to speak with you all once again. On slide nine, the upper left bar chart, as discussed in prior quarters, shows aluminum demand continues to grow worldwide. As you can see, the bullish trend is projected to continue in the forward years, a trend we believe will continue to be supported by the uptick in the global economy over the last few quarters, if not accelerated. On the upper right, we see the healthy performance in the LME aluminum price, which has been trading between 21 and 2400 per ton for some time now. 
Another bullish trend shown on this graph is the continued decline in LME inventory levels, which has supported aluminum prices above 2000 for the last six months. The lower LME inventories and higher aluminum prices, coupled with moderating production levels in China, has led to the restarts mentioned on slide 10. At the same time, the world is still wary of high inventories in China and where these volumes will ultimately wind up in the future. Dumping of aluminum has garnered a lot of attention over the last few years in many countries, especially India and the U.S. On the lower left of slide nine, you can see the fuel oil prices in the first quarter 2018 continued the upward trend we have seen over the past few quarters. Fuel oil prices have increased almost 17% in first quarter 2018 compared to first quarter 2017. Now turning to slide 10. Asian primary aluminum production is up 8.1% in the first quarter of 2018 compared to the first quarter 2017, according to recent industry updates. During the winter season, there were several curtailments of calciners in China, and we'll be watching the availability of these products now that the winter curtailments are over. On the upper right, you can see the estimated incremental production capacity being added in the United States. The restarts originally started due to the favorable conditions in the aluminum market, as well as the projected curtailments in China. These have been further bolstered um, by a 10% import duty and sanctions issued by the United States. Further, strong growth in LME and U.S. Midwest premium accelerated the capacity restarts in the U.S. The first of the restarts were three pot lines at Alcoa's Warwick plant with a consolidated operating capacity of 161,000 tons per annum. Two of these pot lines were started, uh, began restarting from calendar year 2017 and continued through first quarter 2018. The third pot line is estimated to commence in the second quarter 2018. The largest restart is by Magnitude 7 Metals, a company that purchased Naranda's New Madrid facility. The smelter expects to add around 175,000 tons per annum of operating capacity in calendar year 2018 with the restart of two pot lines. The third restart is Century Aluminum's Hawesville facility. All of the five pot lines are expected to be operational by Q1 2019, adding up to 155,000 tons per annum of incremental production capacity in this region. The cumulative restarts would increase primary aluminum production in the U.S. to approximately 1.3 million tons per annum by 2019, almost 65% higher compared to calendar year 2017. During the first quarter, we saw three geopolitical events that had it could have some impact on our industry. One was a 10% tariff announced by the United States in March on aluminum imports, with the exception of imports from Canada and Mexico. These Canadian and Mexican imports, however, exemptions came with annual import limitations. So while they will not be subject to tariffs, they will be limited in regards to the amount of metal each country can import into the United States. In addition, the U.S. Treasury Department added one of the largest global aluminum suppliers onto its sanctions or OFAC list. This caused immediate reaction within the market. However, it's widely believed ownership at this company will address the sanctions to ensure its name is removed from the list. A third development occurred in January 2018 when the government in India increased the import duty on petroleum coke from 2.575% to 11%. These geopolitical reforms are impacting our industry, but we are taking pause to see where they will land and how restricted they will ultimately be. So we are constantly monitoring the situation and assessing their impact. Moving on to slide 11 on the performance of the carbon business segments. On slide 11, carbon sales volumes during Q1 2018 were 662,000 metric tons, a decrease of roughly 2.6% compared to 680,000 metric tons in Q1 2017. The decrease is mainly due to lower sales volumes in CPC by roughly 5.4%. Part of that decrease was the result of prolonged negotiation with customers 
following the import duty increase enacted in India on January 5th of this year. We had anticipated higher volumes from CPC in the quarter, but our objective ultimately is to maximize margins and optimize our available raw materials portfolios, and these were inhibited by not by our inability to recuperate some of um, that import duty impact. It is our goal is not to achieve sales volumes at the expense of profitability, but ultimately focus on margins. As a result, the company is evaluating the viability of continuing to produce at full rates, as the last incremental tons being produced at a few of our facilities are very nominal in overall contribution to the bottom line due to the stress this is putting on our raw materials platform. We will continue to focus on profitability and not volumes in our businesses, but ultimately will serve our markets. On a positive note, there is an increase in coal tar pitch sales volumes by 4.7% due to increased demand and capacity utilization. During Q1 2018, the average blended blended realization increased by 56.7% after considering the unfavorable impact from the depreciation of the U.S. dollar by 4% which is offset by the favorable impact from the appreciation of the euro by 10.7% against the Indian rupee. As a result of these various factors, revenue from carbon segment increased by 52.6% in Q1 2018 as compared to Q1 2017. During Q1 2018, adjusted EBITDA in the carbon segment increased by 2.8 billion rupees due to the higher sales volumes from Coltar Pitch coupled with improved realization across all our carbon products. Turning to slide 12, advanced material sales volumes during Q1 2018 was 110,000 metric tons, a decrease of 4.3% compared to 115,000 metric tons in Q1 2017. There was a decrease in sales volumes by 13.3%, and 7.1% in engineered products and petrochemical intermediates, respectively, in Q1 2018 compared to Q1 2017. Sales volumes remain constant in naphthalene derivatives and resins during Q1 2018 compared to Q1 17. During Q1 18, the average blended realization increased by 5.6%, along with the favorable impact from the appreciation of the euro against the Indian rupee by 10.7%. Overall, the revenue from advanced material business increased by 1% during Q1 2018 as compared to Q1 17. Adjusted EBITDA in the advanced material segment decreased by 40.7% due to increased operating expenses and higher raw materials quotations resulting from the appreciation of the euro coupled with plant outages during our first quarter. Before I hand the call back to Jagan, I'd like to address the press releases issued by Alcoa, Rio Tinto, and Apple yesterday with regard to the development of a carbonless aluminum smelting process. We believe it is a huge achievement that two large aluminum smelters and one of the greatest technology companies of our time have joined forces to produce an environmentally friendly product. The process which they will be investing in appears to incorporate some of the same technology that Alcoa has been investing in for decades, and the material challenges are substantial. The industry collectively has worked for more than 50 years on processes which evolve oxygen instead of CO2 from the process, so any new breakthrough will need to overcome scale-up problems identified in the past. The long development timeline and significant government funding likely reflects the technology development risk. For the foreseeable future, we believe and remain confident aluminum will continue to be produced by the existing hall Herald process. As a company, we are focused on high-value specialized products as well. This is the main reason behind our advancement into environmentally friendly products, such as our low PAH sealer base, and high-performance coatings for the rapidly developing lithium-ion battery industry. These are high-value niche applications, and we look forward to playing a role in the continued development of these eco-friendly products in the future. 
This is an additional reason for creating the advanced material segment, as we see the potential for large growth in these highly specialized industries and with our products. I'd now like to hand the call back to Joggin to discuss the cement segment. Joggin? Thanks, Jerry. Uh, during first quarter calendar year 2018, there was a mixed trend in sales volume in our cement business. There was an increase in volume in certain markets such as Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Kerala, and Odisha, partially offset by a decrease in volumes in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Goa, and Pondicherry. Overall, our cement sales utilization decreased by 13% during Q1 2018 as compared to Q1 2017. And they were partially, partly offset by an increase in, by increase in volumes by 4.3%. Due to these reasons, the revenue from cement business decreased by 9.3%. EBTA from the cement segment increased by 52.4% due to increased volumes and savings in operating costs. We are working towards reducing costs by various efforts, the largest of which was the installation of the waste state recovery power plant at our Karnal facility, which is enabling the plant to produce approximately 7 megawatts of electricity from the waste gases generated in the manufacturing process. All the electricity generated by this unit is consumed at the plant itself. Further, we upgraded a cooler in our Nalgonda plant at a cost of rupees 156 million to achieve energy efficiency. In addition, another energy initiative is underway at our Nalgonda facility to set up another 4.1 megawatt waste heat recovery power plant with a capex of rupees 500 million. That power plant is estimated to commence operations by January 2019. On a positive note, we have seen increased market demand in the states of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh compared to the previous quarter, and we anticipate this demand continuing throughout the year due to infrastructure and housing projects. Now, I would ask Srinivas to update you on the financial position of the company. Srinivas? Thank you, sir. A warm welcome to all the participants. Turning to slide number 14, I would like to update you on the debt position of the company. At the outset, Rain is placed to inform you that all that we have completed our second uh, phase of refinancing of the 2021 notes in January 2018 with the issuance of a euro denominated term loan B of 390 million euros at an interest rate of Euribar plus 300 basis points with a floor of zero. Upon the successful completion of the two refinancing, the effective average interest rate is reduced by approximately 300 basis points compared to March 2017 quarter. At the end of the first quarter of 2018, the gross debt is 1,155 million US dollars, including working capital loan of 53 million dollars. The company continues to utilize its working capital facilities due to the increased in, increase in quotations of raw materials. At the end of the quarter, the company had 419 million US dollars invested in its working capital requirements. Due to the refinancing executed in March 2017, and January 2018, the average interest rate has fallen to 5.22% compared to approximately 7.56% a year ago. And the company has extended the first maturity date of its long-term debt to January 2025. The company ended the quarter with a net debt position of 1,034 million US dollars with, uh, with a cash balance of 101 million US dollars at the balance sheet and unused, unused credit limits of 139 million dollars. The company is comfortably placed to meet its obligations and continue to make the required investments to meet the market demand. Now I would like to um, turn to slide number 15. Due to the overall increase in the quotation, the networking capital invested in the business has increased from $396 million, uh, million as on December 31st, 2017 to $490 million as of March 31st, 2018 an increase of 23 million US dollars. The company has minimal scheduled repayment for the next few years as the major de debt repayments are, no are not due until 2025. The repayments of uh, US dollar 24 million are scheduled during 2018 and another 38 million dollars over the next four years. However the, com however, the company has the flexibility to accelerate the debt repayment through the prepayment of term loan B after meeting the working capital requirements and capex spending for proposed expansion projects. Thank you. And I will now turn the call over to the operator to start the Q&A session. 
Over to you, operator. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use hands while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Thank you. The first question is from the line of Nagra Chandrasekhar from Labarnum Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you. My first question is for Gerard. Uh, you talked about curtailing some marginal volumes that are unprofitable. Uh, as we are a month and a half into this quarter, could you give us a sense of pricing and current spreads on CPC and CDP in both uh, India and the U.S.? Well, we don't give specific uh, spread information, um, but what I what I can give you, I, I think, the beginning of your... I was going more uh, directionally. Yeah. Oh, no problem. Um, it, it, a couple of things to, to, to qualify um, the way we're looking at this. Um, first and foremost, um, we didn't do anything during the first quarter. It's, it's been through the second quarter that we're looking at this. Um, when you look at... Um, when you look at the, um, uh, the run-up in GPC prices, GPC prices have continued to go up, which uh, was not unexpected, um, you know, um, uh, this year because um, the strong demand is driving, uh, you know, the strong demand for CPC is driving more GPC demand and therefore um, naturally driving up the GPC prices. Um, and CPC prices, while um, outside of Asia have continued up, they've kind of flattened in Asia. So the, the big thing that we're weighing coming off of the first quarter is, um, you know, when this uh, GPC import duty got passed in, uh, in India, um, that was something that we already had set uh, prices for first quarter by the time it settled and quite honestly could not recoup it. At that time, so as we look at it, we say, um, as as we look at the, um, the the two million tons of um, of sales that we have um, for um, uh, or plan, I should say, that we have for the year, to source all the GPC needed for that. Um, when you get down to the incremental volumes of GPC, and if we're not able to recoup um, all the import duties. It just won't make sense for us from a margin perspective um, to produce those volumes. So um, we're still evaluating it. We have not um, completely assessed how much we will take out uh, from the year. But at this point, um, we, we have cut back a little bit in the second quarter, um, taking some longer outages uh, of our planned outages on our CPC facilities in order to not rush back and be able to ease the demand. Um, and we're already seeing that um, that um, the indication, the leading indication for the third quarter is that uh, perhaps there'll be a little bit more green coke around than there has been in the first half of the year. Got it. Uh, and then uh, secondly, uh, calciners uh, in China have to an extent restarted after making some environmental investments through the winter. Uh, could you yeah. give us a sense of I know it's, it's very opaque, but could you give us a sense of are we likely to see shutdowns to the extent we saw last year uh, happen there, and what should be the impact on pricing in the second half of the year? Um, would we see a, a quicker normalization to the $8,200 spreads um, that you uh, you know guide, guide to uh, uh, in the longer term as a result? Um. Yeah, I mean, the, the, just, just to recap our understanding about the winter curtailments in China, um, we, we've really seen from the data that's come out. When you look at the strong aluminum growth, um, in China year over year, um, it's, it, it only very little aluminum 
capacity was taken out um, as we see it um, because there were still strong gains year over year. Um, on the calcination side, though, we do think that there was um, there were uh, was a bigger impact there on carbon plants uh, with their curtailments. As you mentioned, some took the opportunity to uh, invest in um, some rudimentary um, scrubbing apparatus in order to not have to curtail in the future. Um, impact on the market overall is that um, we um, we we have seen um, you know more export in the first quarter of 2018 out of China than we had seen really in the um, uh, you know in the second half of 2017. So I think it demonstrates um, that um, that there's there's a little more um, CPC around than there was. Um, at, uh, at, you know, at, during the second half of the year, um, or really probably throughout 2017. But there are new starts coming in China from an aluminum perspective throughout the year. Um, and the restarts that we're seeing in the U.S. will be something that will pull more tons um, from the marketplace as well, from a CPC perspective. So, um, we're, we're, um, you know, watching it carefully, believe we understand what's been happening, but as aluminum production, um, and, you know, from the restart angle, um, you know, continues to, um, ramp up throughout the year, as well as completely new capacity in China and in Asia in general, um, we think that things should level out again. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sauron Parikh from JMP Capital. Please go ahead. Excuse me, this is the operator. Mr. Parikh, you can go ahead with your question, please. Uh, excuse me, this is the operator. Mr. Parikh, we request you to please rejoin the queue. There's a lot of disturbance from your line. The next question is from the line of Arvind Kutari from India Navesh. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, my question uh, again is related to the curtailment of maybe, you know, our CPC production that we are focusing on maybe in Q2. And uh, due to our negotiations, we could not maybe, you know, uh, manufacture or maybe, uh, you know, uh, provide the material in India because of the excise duty. But there was a shipment that was delayed in last quarter that uh, the management had guided. So if we work on the volumes, the CPC volumes have uh, adjusted for that shipment gone down dramatically. So was this a very big issue with the excise duty and with the curtailments maybe planned in the Q2? What kind of uh, carbon volumes are we looking at uh, uh, going ahead? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, um, the the the... There was an impact on volumes related to the first quarter, absolutely no doubt, related to the um, the uh, accelerate the, the increase in the um, import duties in India, absolutely no doubt related to that. Um, so the impact on volumes first quarter, um, I don't want to say exclusively, we did have some shipments that um, that fell over. Um, we had several, some in the U.S., some in India, that fell over um, into the second quarter. That impacted us, but anything that wasn't time related was definitely related to um, the the import duties. Um, as far as volumes for the second quarter, we're not anticipating any you know sharp fall off in our volumes um, related to anything. We um, we merely the the, um, the the reduction in production is something that will ultimately cut our inventories, trim our inventories uh, in the long run and manage our working capital. So there, there's nothing related to um, anything in our operations or anything that will affect second quarter um, related to volumes. But we are still ironing out, um, you know, the, um, the recapture of um, the import duties um, and trying to shake that out for the second quarter. So uh, uh, if I understand it properly, we'll be reducing our production of CPC maybe going forward to uh, rationalize the inventories? Marginally. We are not expecting substantial reductions, but, you know, we are just looking at uh, on the periphery, you know, if we are uh, seeing any 
reduction in margin you know basically we want to cut in that because uh, uh, you know that's the most prudent thing because uh, we can reduce the raw material cost so hopefully that should not impact the overall expectation yeah uh, here's where we are right now yeah one right. additional comment is uh, you might have seen in our slide presentation where the aluminum production in us and north america is expected to increase uh, so we expect that the sales to those smelters in us will increase uh, in the rest of the year 2018 yeah the, the, as I said, the, 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 what we've curtailed during the second quarter is just merely inventory management. As Srinivas just rightly put, um, the, the ramp-ups that we're seeing in the United States will help move product. We were just looking at it and saying since we did have some reduced sales um, in India, there was no need to continue to push when we were actually um, pushing aggressively to get enough green coke into the system um, with with the prices continuing to accelerate, so as I as I said very clearly in my comments, we are focused on profitability. We are not focused on volume. Um, so we will we will trade off volume for maintaining profitability to uh, to the maximum extent. Got it. But there was a large order that you got. Uh, Mr. Kutari, maybe request you please rejoin the queue. Okay, okay. Yes, yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Jain from Motilal Oswal Securities. Please go ahead. Sanjay Jain from Motilal Oswal Securities. Go ahead with your question, please. Hi. Uh, uh, my question is more uh, related to what's happening in U.S. And, uh, uh, I mean, you highlighted few things like there is an increase in import duty, there is also new production growing, and uh, there is also the local premium which have gone up. So overall, uh, aluminium production in U.S. is increasing, and their total price of aluminium is also increasing. So in this environment, uh, uh, how is the negotiating power, uh, you know, shifting in favor of CPC producers? Uh, is there a headroom for price increase or not? I mean, can any comments on that? Yeah, um, just to be clear, the the import duties affect India and India only, so they're not affecting. Oh, you're talking about the aluminium. Oh, the, oh, the aluminium. Uh, okay. Um, so, so the import duties on aluminium are um, are something that actually bolsters the U.S. aluminium production. Um, obviously because um, it, it makes them um, more competitive against imports. Um, so this ramp up that we're, we're um, seeing will put more demand in the U.S., which is part and parcel why we're, we're saying, um, you know, we, we are seeing, while we're seeing more exports out of China, um, we're seeing stronger demand over the long term, well, over the immediate term, in India, in the U.S., excuse me, for um, for CPC, and that's where we'd rather keep the product um, going forward. So um, we'll we'll have to wait and see. I'm not seeing at this point more pricing power for CPC um, in the U.S. marketplace, but we'll have to see what the second half negotiation holds for us. Okay, uh, related to that, uh, is what is the, how is the input cost trending like gpc uh, should we expect some more increase in gpc cost uh, in the subsequent quarters or like the way the cpc prices have plateaued maybe the gpc prices have also plateaued yeah we we have um you know cpc for ultra low sulfur coke cpc pri uh, gpc prices ran up a bit um but um but we really see moving forward from here um, GPC prices should moderate. They should flatten out um, because the strong demand, again, the, the, the strong demand for GPC is just tempered a little bit. Um, there's enough availability, and we're seeing those um, start to level out. So we're comfortable that um, moving forward, um, we should be in a position to protect margin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sorin Parikh from JMP Capital. Please go ahead. 
Yeah. Uh, good evening, sirs. Uh, yeah. So my question is for Mr. Gerard. Uh, I just wanted to know that you know, I mean, uh, can you elaborate on the opportunity of the lithium ion battery coatings uh, that we are working on right now? And are we also working on any other products related to uh, electric vehicles? Yes. Um, the, um, the the lithium ion batteries where we're involved there is in the coating side of of that. It's um, it's the coating for the anode, which has a direct impact on the um, on the um, chargeability and the battery life overall overall on the lithium ion product. Um, and um, so we're involved in a number of areas, in uh, a number of sizes in that business, and it's a very rapidly growing business. So um, we, I, what I can tell you is we've made um, tremendous inroads in this over the last several years, and um, we're very excited about the potential because in Asia in particular, um, it's um, it's an opportunity for us to grow um, in this industry. Now, anything forward-looking is speculative because, as you know, these evolving technologies are moving so fast. Um, the demand is upon you before you can really assess it. So it's hard to say exactly where it might go. But to, to tell you how committed we are to, um, you know, as with my opening remarks, um, you know, we're extremely committed and we are, we are taking products from other applications because this is a, a solid margin product for us in emerging market, highly specialized niche product. That's also quite eco-friendly. Um, so we will continue to move in this direction and we've greatly increased our engineering team to continue to see where we can penetrate these uh, new engineered product market areas for our advanced materials. Um, and we're looking to expand wherever we can in both um, the coatings as well as the sealer-based areas. Right. I appreciate I appreciate, sir. Uh, just one follow-up question on the same, uh, that uh, what would be the current status of, uh, I mean, if you can just put a number to it, and also what do you expect in the next three or four years? Uh, what's the current status? Yeah, status as in, I mean, I mean, are we commercially, I mean, have we commercialized the product or, I mean, you know, what is, uh, uh, what is the current? Uh, yeah, these, these products, no, no, this is existing, um, solid volumes for us. Um, the, 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 you know, the quantifying exactly that goes into lithium ion, but this is in our engineered products category. Okay, so, the volumes that you see in our engineered uh, products category um, would would essentially be representative of um, both our Corbores and Petro Res um, products that go into these areas. Srinivas, do you have that? Uh, about 13,000 tons in uh, March 2018 quarter. So in the quarter, it was about 13,000 tons just in the first quarter of the year. So you can, that, that's a pretty rateable business, so you can just extrapolate that for the year. Um, and that has been growing. I, I can tell you that that market for us has probably been growing, um, you know, at a, at, a, at a rate exceeding, you know, 100, um, 100% per annum, probably about 200% per annum. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir, and uh, best wishes. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Kumar from Vision Investment. Please go ahead. Um, good evening. Uh, my first question uh, relates uh, to the uh, sharp increase in prices of uh, alumina and uh, its uh, effects on uh, aluminum industry and uh, any effects on uh, rain. Could you uh, kindly uh, elaborate on the same? Yeah, the, the, uh, first and foremost, um, alumina we don't have anything to do with alumina per se. It's a raw material for the aluminum process. So um, what happened at the Alu Norte um, Brazil um, facility had no effect on us, but as you mentioned in your question, it greatly spiked alumina prices, which is 
um, a large consideration for uh, aluminum producers as far as, um, you know, fundamental costs between aluminum, you know, their raw material of alumina, uh, their power and their labor, that makes up, uh, you know, roughly um, 85, 90% of their costs. But uh, 80, 85% of majority of the aluminum smelters actually cover there on a long-term basis. Yeah. So this is a spot, a spot material, so it should not have a me- measurable impact on them. So. Yeah. And uh, uh, second question is, uh, 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 compared to the w- 1 billion uh, debt, uh, uh, you have uh, taken about 24 uh, million as a repayment, and uh, you have stated that uh, you can increase the same. This is the uh, forecast. People, uh, the uh, analysts are uh, hoping for uh, at least uh, between 100 million to uh, 120 million uh, as per their projections for uh, your uh, uh, current year. So what is the best case uh, according to current trends uh, which uh, rain industries can uh, repay the, the loans? Uh, yes. Actually, you might have seen, uh, we have announced two, two projects. One is the HSCR project in uh, Germany we announced, which we have planned to execute by mid of 2019. Same way, we are also looking at uh, doing a CPC plant in India, 370,000 tons. Uh, both these projects together will take uh, uh, a combined capex of about 130 million US dollars. So when we have expansion projects, uh, we would like to use the cash generated in the operations from the expansion projects. Uh, and whatever expansion projects we are announcing, majority of those projects will be uh, will be created or uh, only with the internal cash accrual. We don't want to borrow any additional debt. So having said that, you will not see a visible reduction in the debt per se over the next 12 months or 15 months. Huh? But even if there is any additional cash over and above this capex, that will be remaining as uh, as the incremental cash in the business. Huh? Because uh, our idea is to maintain the cash for any uh, future expansions also. Uh, that is the reason you don't see a reduction in the gross debt, but you could you could see a reduction in the net debt. Okay. And uh, uh, okay, last, this is uh, the operator. Mr. Kumar may be requested to rejoin the queue for follow-up questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavesha from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, so my question is on CPC realizations. Um, uh, we're saying that uh, we try to negotiate uh, uh, passing on import duty uh, to customers. Even then, our CPC realization have been flattish to around 26,000 rupees on a sequential basis, although we see that plants report the prices to be higher by 12-13%. So what could be the reason for the same? Have you seen a reduction or have you seen an increase? Uh, it's been flattish, I'm seeing. Uh, with regards to plats, it's increased, yeah, from 400 to some $455. Uh, so there was an increase of 12% or something. See, actually, you know, it's the, the CPC prices were flattish, which means, you know, basically we could not pass on the increased uh, raw material cost or the, the increased duty to the customer. That is the reason on the CPC side you are seeing flattish, but on the raw material side the prices have increased, so that has impacted the margin. I mean, overall, we, we're realizing um, a higher CPC price, but that's really more related to the U.S. than it is specifically to India. So, but your comments are specifically related to India, yeah. driving up, correct? Okay. And my second question is on advanced material. Uh, the margin in advanced material is lower by, EBITDA is lower by 41%. Uh, can you explain this delta and what could be the outlook of this? Bhavesh, can you repeat the question? Uh, the advanced material EBITDA has fallen by 41% on a year-over-year basis to 91 crores. Yeah, uh, what happened is substantially part of the advanced materials are produced in Europe where the functional currency is Euro and uh, the costs are incurred in Euro terms. But we have customers uh, all over the world for those products. So apart from Europe, we sell those products outside US and those sales will happen in US dollar terms though. Because of the appreciation of uh, euro against uh, dollar, uh, our cost in uh, euro terms is remaining the same, but our realization in euro terms have declined. So that is showing some decline in the performance. 
uh, in the advanced material business. Apart from that, there are uh, two or three plants also went for outages during the year, where, during the quarter where the production is on a lower side and maintenance cost is on a higher side. These two factors have contributed for a weaker performance in the advanced materials. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajay Sangvi from Sangvi Stock Services. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yeah, uh, Rajesh here. So I wanted to ask on uh, the uh, large, you know, shipment that got delayed from December till uh, in the last call that was guided. That CPC volume is not reflecting in the current quarter. So, yeah. uh, if, if, if that is sold in the US, then its realization could have also gone up because the prices from Q4 17 have gone up in Q1 18. So, uh, why is there no inventory gains that is showing up in our, uh, you know, numbers? And second is, uh, the project of uh, Visakhapatnam was uh, slated to be completed by Q1 2019. And this uh, presentation, we are seeing a timeline of Q3 2019. So why has there been a delay uh, uh, from our past communications? See, there, on, the, on the first issue, yes, uh, the shipment got delayed from uh, uh, the end of last quarter uh, to, the, to Q4 to Q1, but it was just by a couple of days. So basically that shipment got shipped actually in the first week of uh, January. So it is still the same price, whatever was, uh, it is not that we get an increased price or the Q1 pricing. So it is uh, the same pricing, whatever you are seeing. But as we said in the, earlier in the call, there was a general reduction because uh, we could not come to terms with, uh, uh, with the certain customers in India because of uh, the customs duty issue. So basically we had uh, reduced our volumes into this part of uh, the world. So that has impacted our uh, CPC sales volume in uh, Q1. Hopefully, you know, that going forward, you know, we should be able to correct that. And in regard to the Q1 uh, expansion. Yeah, expansion project, what has happened was there was a little delay in, uh, you know, on the technology portion, you know, that we were supposed to receive from China. Uh, so, but we have now corrected all those things. And we also had certain issues with some interconnection facilities, but all those have been checked and so, but Q3, uh, early part of Q3, we should be able to come into operation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chinmay Sangvi from Principal Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. This is Jimesh here from Principal. Uh, so, a couple of things. Uh, were there any maintenance or repairs related expenses in the Q, uh, in the current quarter? Because the other expenses seem to have jumped up sharply. Uh, adjusted for even the uh, 200 odd million of uh, losses on the forex part and secondly if you can share the kind of percentage increase in the GPC prices over the last six months yeah uh, with regard to the your question on whether there is incremental expenses are there on maintenance or not yes there are incremental expenses. Three of the plants went for a maintenance and that has resulted in uh, uh, higher uh, repair expenses incurred in the March quarter. Apart from that, because of the Euro appreciation, uh, uh, the numbers, uh, almost 45 to 50% of revenues come from Europe. And when we convert them into Indian rupees, you see a visible increase in the price because Euro are almost appreciated by 10% between March 17 and March 18. So these two factors will see that there is an increase in the other expenses though, but partly because of uh, FCN fluctuation and partly because of the higher outages that we have seen in our business. So can you share the number for the uh, higher outages uh, absolute number? What was it for the quarter? It's about 2 to 3 million uh, euro. Okay. And so on the GPC prices, can we see some increase? Uh, what what has been the percentage increase and uh, are we seeing further increase from year on in the coming quarters? The main uh, increase in the GPC prices was mainly related to, while the regular GPC did go up uh, by a smaller percentage, the main increase was in the lower sulfur uh, segment that has actually substantially increased. 
but uh, we are now seeing actually the prices going down a little bit, but not much, but they are going down. So we don't see the prices going up uh, in the near future. Okay, and can you share the percentage increase which has been there? I would say, you know, the prices may be, you know, uh, about 10, 15 percent actually was the increase. Yeah. Between one, uh, December 17 to March 18, yeah, it's yeah. about 10 percent. About 10, 10. Okay, around 10 percent kind of an increase. Yeah. Fine. Okay, fine. And so lastly, uh, as we kind of try and correct the inventory levels for ourselves, over the next two quarters, are we likely to undertake any further uh, shutdowns or maintenance-related work uh, or so that we are kind of ready as to ramp up in terms of our volumes in the second half uh, as the U.S. melter demand increases? Yes, yeah, see, that we always plan, you know, and we don't shut down one plant at a time, all the plants, you know, we actually do schedule it in different, different timings. So we actually are considering that uh, uh, because there are a couple of issues that may happen. One is the ramp up of uh, CPC in the U.S. and again the uh, the winter cuts again in uh, possible winter cuts again in China coming back starting November. So that could improve, uh, you know, the, they could create demand. So we will uh, we are watching it. Fine. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritesha from Investec Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is uh, if you could detail the sensitivity of uh, crude prices on the margin for both the businesses. Can you repeat the question again? Uh, uh, sir, what is the sensitivity of... Hello? Uh, sir, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the first question is, uh, what is the sensitivity of the crude prices on the margins for both the businesses? No, there is uh, there is very minimal. The crude prices don't impact. There may be an impact uh, at any moment of time, but uh, generally they do not impact. Uh, they are not indexed. None of our products are indexed to the crude oil prices. Only thing is the freight what we incur, the ocean freight for moving the material, as you know, that is linked to crude and it could be maybe a 5%, 10% uh, sort of thing. But no material impact. Uh, so uh, the Red Girls products, whatever we have, uh, should one assume that we have a pass-through mechanism over there? Yeah, because we do agree on prices and uh, yes, you know, they, we do negotiate on a quarterly basis. So, yeah, yes, and as we said, you know, the crude prices should not actually have a material impact. Okay, that helps. Uh, sir, my second question is, uh, what is a more favorable scenario for rain industries? Uh, is it an aluminum deficit scenario globally, or is it a scenario when you see aluminum production to move up, where in which gives more visibility on our volumes? And uh, if you could explain exactly uh, both the variables, how the status is right now. So we are a converter of products. So basically, the more the production, the better it is for us, because our raw material prices moves along with the finished product prices. So the more the production means, you know, the tighter situation it gets, it's better for us. Uh, but so, uh, to my, uh, but uh, so to my understanding, the contracts that we negotiate, uh, it's more on LME, right? Which will be a function of demand no, supply. No, no, it has nothing to do with LME. It so we are only linked to aluminium production, production, not to the LME at all. Okay, okay. Uh, that, that helps. We're not linked to crude and we're not linked to LME. We're strictly supply and demand of GPC and CPC, coal tar, and coal tar pitch. Uh, that helps. And uh, last question for Gerard. Uh, sir, on slide number 10, uh, you have indicated uh, 0.5 million tons of capacity moving uh, within China. Uh, how do you read this? Like, is it a one-off case or are there more instances similar to this uh, that you have heard of or uh, we can expect? Point five. I missed... Uh Within China, the capacities are moving to better. Uh, yeah, the, the capacities in China being up, you mean? Yeah. Moving yes, it's so a 0.5 million ton capacity, what you have indicated on slide number 10, uh, which is moving in China from one region to another. Uh, is it yeah. a one-off case, or are we hearing of uh, similar more cases which we can expect going forward? Yeah, I mean, this is this is all part and parcel of, of China's Aluminum strategy to um, to incentivize um, people to move to less populated areas and such. We'll, we'll see this trend continue. 
But, uh, you know, overall, um, you know, th this is the incremental growth that we're going to see each year um, from China um, in, uh, you know, in the years going forward. So this is, uh, yes, I would say answering your question specifically is these types of things are going to continue to happen because they're going to be very careful in vetting the locations where they add capacity. Okay. Uh, that has, uh, thank you so much and good luck. Thank, thank, thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Kalpesh Gauri from Veda Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, yeah, uh, what was the impact with the U.S. sanction of Russell? Can you update the status? Yeah, and the OFAC sanctions. Yeah. Um, right now, when those sanctions were originally announced, they seem to be very restrictive related to Rusal. Um, let me put it in the context of, uh, of our company. The only place that any sanctions that were ultimately imposed on Rusal could or would affect us is through our joint venture um, in Russia um, called Severtar. And that equates to, I believe, less than 4% of the revenues of the company. Um, overall. So this is no material impact. I want to talk about, you know, that right up front. But also, um, you know, in looking at it, they would have been very restrictive as far as uh, we do business with Rusal in, uh, in Russia. Um, but it looks like that the U.S. has signaled an avenue because they've already extended the deadline to wind down uh, your business from June to October. And then they've also given Rusal a pathway to avoid the sanctions by changing the ownership structure right. and the um, and the the effective management uh, controlling management agreement in the in the company. So we're we're quite confident that this will all work out. But that's why I wanted to give you the order of magnitude to begin with, anyway. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vikas Sharma from Entrust Family. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening. Uh, my first question has been on answered already. My second question is basically, what is the effective tax rate we can expect in calendar year 18? Is it going to be in the range of 28 to 30 or we can expect a reduction? You can see the historically our, uh, our effective tax rate is to be 35 to 37 percent. Because we are operating in countries like India where the tax rate is almost 35%. There is tax reduction in the U.S. from 35% uh, to 21%. And in Germany, uh, in Belgium, it is reduced from 34% uh, to 29%. But as we generate income in multiple tax jurisdictions, and there will be some incremental tax in moving profit from one country to the other country, we expect the tax rate for the year 2018 should be in the range of 33 to 34%. Some two, 200 to 300 basis points lower than our historical rate. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Ngosh from uh, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you, sirs. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, most of my questions have been answered. Uh, just one minor question. Uh, in the cement plant, do we use petroleum coke? Yes, we do use, but uh, very limited quantities because of uh, the increase in prices. We are sh shifted over to uh, imported coal, please. Sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. That will be all. I'll get to the field. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Balakumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, my question is on the new project that you are going to take on. It is uh, a 60 million euro project in Germany. So I read it in one of the news that you're going to manufacture three products there, but in the presentation it just says only one product. So could you please explain on why there is some difference? Actually, different grades of products, all are HHCR only. Hydrogenated, hydrocarbon okay. resin. Mm -hmm. Basically, all of them yeah. are resins, please, you know, white water resins. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, can you repeat, did you say it was, you, you were saying core, I think. Did you say three core versus one core? No, it's three different. Yeah, uh, it says there are, 
free products known as the cardboard, snowware, C10, then advanced carbon material for the production of lithium-ion batteries, and one is the white pollutant free resin. No, 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 no. I think there's confusion. Yeah, at, at, the, at the hydrogenated resins, it's just going to be resins that we're producing there, white, water white resins. Okay, for the adhesives um, industry. So it, it's going to be adhesive and coating industry that we're going to be um, producing. This is not, we will not be producing there um, the, um, any, any of the lithium ion battery or the, um, the LT sealer base or the carbores. Um, those are separate products and advanced materials. Okay. It, it, that, that's, um, you don't confuse the engineered products with the, uh, with the resin products. Okay, and also in the article it was mentioned that it was a 60 million euro project, but in the presentation it mentioned as a 60 million dollars project. So whether it's in the dollars or in the euros. So it's the same thing, you know, it's basically if you convert it at the current exchange rate, it works out the same thing. Yeah, roughly 66 million US dollars. Yeah. Ah, okay. Thank okay, you. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Sunil Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, 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 my question is more on the 140 crore tax, right? So can you please elaborate uh, on what cost this one of tax is? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? 140 crore tax. Okay, you are referring to the tax charge for the year. So it's about 34 to 35% is the tax that we have paid for the March 2018 quarter. But if you look, if you compare with December 2017, because of the rate changes from 35% to 21%, there is an extraordinary tax benefit in the, in the quarter of March, December 2017. If you exclude that, then the tax charge for US also, for December 2017 also at a similar level. Okay, so uh, should we assume for the the rest of the uh, calendar year, uh, we probably have the same tax rate of 34% or 35%? Yeah, yeah, it should be in the range of 32% to 34%. Okay. 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 Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Jagan Mohan Reddy for his closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, with the restructuring of our finished product based on business process and geographical alignment of the sales team, the company will now be able to focus on improving the advanced materials portfolio by maximizing the value addition from buy products during tar distillation. The hydrogenated hydrocarbon resins project is one such initiative. It provides the advanced material segment a springboard for growth by utilizing products seeing reduced demand to pr produce in de pro demand growth products for the future. The company is also concentrating on its premium products such as carburetors used in specialty applications such as lithium ion batteries and energy storage. It will also continue focus on and develop more environmental friendly products such as LT sealer base or ultra seal as these products are in high demand. These initiatives do not mean it has lost sight of its heritage as represented from the Indian Shaft Cal Center project which is under construction and expected to start operations within Q3 2019. The company will continue its initiative to improve capacity utilization across all production facilities and strive to optimize operational expenses globally. Thanks for participating in today's call, and we look forward to speaking with you next quarter.